Good evening, church, and those who might be with us online. I'm grateful to be with you this evening. Uh, I just have a, a uh, something I just want to share with you a little bit. Uh, and if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Father, we ask for your help tonight that your word would go forth. Uh, we, we acknowledge that we have no strength without you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that without you, without your touch, without your anointing, with the words will just fall right out of, onto the floor. And won't touch anyone. Lord, it has to be you. It has to be you to help us and touch us. And guide us, Lord. Lead us into your word. Lead us into your truth. Oh, God, take us where we've never been before. Take us in places uh, in your kingdom, Lord, in your kingdom's work, in your word. Take us in the depths of your love that we've never been before. We ask you, please, help us to be willing. Lord, let your power be manifest tonight in our hearts, our lives, in the lives of those that may be online with us. We pray for a blessing for them. Strengthen us, Lord, we pray, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If uh, I heard a little bit of speaking on, on this topic, and I've, I'd read it before, and you have too, many times, but I've, I've been pondering it in my own heart, and I'm going to take a, I, I, I don't know, I don't know who, it's, who it's for. I, I don't, I mean, but uh, if, if you had a, if you would say, you don't have to raise your hand, but would you, th is there a thought sometimes in your mind that, is there parts of you that you wish weren't there? Could you, if you raise maybe just a finger, that you say, I wish that was gone. I, I could, I could, hold up. And just sometimes you look and you say, Lord, I wish that was just gone. I wish that would just go away. And that thing that just hung, has hang on and now that part of me that, Oh, I wish wasn't part of me. You, you know, you may say it that way. And sometimes there are there are areas of our life where, I mean, there are times when I'm thinking, uh, you know, when you think about helping other people and you think, it's all I can do to keep my head above water. And here I am, you want me to help somebody? You know, you, you, you're struggling. You're, you know, I remember when we went to the wilds and you had to do, do they still do that test where you swim? If you're a sponsor, you have to swim out so far and come back so far. Then you have to tread water so far. I did pretty good out and back, but it was when I was treading water, it was like, whew, please hurry up, <laughs> hurry up. And I made it. I barely made it. But there's sometimes you feel spiritually like you're just treading water and, and, and you're, you're struggling with a certain thing maybe. And, and I want to I, I wanna, I wanna look at two, two things I, and I need help in this area as much as anybody in the world. But, but I think there's, there's, a, there's, there's a place of the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. But then I also believe there is a time when God says, okay, you, you got to move. Does that make sense? You know, the thing is, uh, I was looking about the Holy Spirit now, the word spirit is found 694 times in Scripture. And some statistics that I heard a man share, a church attendance is down to 1.5 times per month, the average Christian. 1.5 times a month. That's, that's kind of low, isn't it? And uh, the... Uh, the, the, the people doing the studies, one of the top 10 reasons for lack of, or the downward spiral, if you'd have it, of church attendance, it was strange that was never mentioned that God is not the main attraction. There's all these other reasons, and the Holy Spirit is not the focus. But there's all these other reasons why 
But never one time was the Holy Spirit mentioned or God mentioned that just the focus has left. And, and the reason I'm saying the Holy Spirit, listen to what A.W. A. Tozer said. If the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church today, 95% of what we do would go on and no one would know the difference. If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn from the New Testament church, 95% of what they did would stop and everybody would know the difference. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? And it makes me ponder to myself, Lord, what have I done in your house or what do I, what are, where have I ignored the Holy Spirit? Uh, I think it's impossible, it's impossible to be a fruitful Christian and ignore the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. It, you cannot do it. How, I, I, I've just been looking and I've been listening. And how many things does the Holy Spirit do? How many would you think? Everything God does. Everything God does? What, name something. Convicts, comforts, instructs. I found 37 things, and I don't think I found them all. And so if the Holy Spirit does 37 things, how is it that he cannot be the main focus? Now, there are denominations that have focused totally on the gifts of the Spirit. That can be done. There can be focuses. And we as, we as humans have a tendency to always go whole, whole hog in one area. But you know, he creates. He gives life. He upholds us. And all these, as you can find them in Scripture, Psalm 51. A lot in this, he anoints us. He gives us rest. Some of these you've already said. He causes us to obey his word. He gives us knowledge. He gives us wisdom, power. He leads us. He gives us utterance. He casts out devils, demons, spirits. He gives instruction. He gives truth. He's, he bears witness to the truth, right? He indwells in us, abides in us. We, we've, you could say the same. And somebody's already said he comforts us. Somebody said he guides us. And you, Brother Chris, he convicts us. He teaches us. He gives dreams. Brother Chris mentioned dreams. He gives visions. He gives the ability to prophesy. He bears witness to the truth. He helps us. He's a helper. You've already said. He speaks. The Holy Spirit speaks. He renews us. He calls us. He gives gifts. He prays for us. He frees us. That's one, one I want to talk about maybe this evening a little bit is the freedom that he gives. He frees us. He produces fruit. He transforms us. He seals us. He gives us access to the Father. He enables, he's an enabler. There are many. You just start studying it. Pull it up. And start, start looking. Start writing these down and looking at the things that he does. One writer said the church doesn't just necessarily need to be filled with people, but it needs people that are filled with God. Right? One preacher said that whose church is just Thriving and, and the Holy Spirit is there's salvations every Sunday, every t Wednesday night. He said, When God comes, people come. When God comes, people come. And and, and it's a it's a fact. You can just see it. You see you see the move. But what I want like to look at a little bit is is sometimes when our life has what we would call chains of, of uh, restriction. Have you ever felt restricted? 
restricted in some area of your life or your heart or maybe there's a there's just something that seems to keep you from uh, getting to some place in the Lord that you that you would that you want, that you long to be. I mean, I, I don't think you would be here tonight if you didn't long to be something that God would have you to be. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't even come if there wasn't a desire to be uh, more than you are, uh, taking you uh, and growing and growing and. Uh, I watch my little grandson Walker. Every time I see him, he's got a new word. He's got a new thing that he says, and it just thrills my heart. Little things that I watch him do, and and he's growing. His new word is, uh, I want it. I want it. So Grandpa says, okay. So I want to look at it. just maybe, maybe I'm, t I don't want to twist this thing and, and bring more out of it than it really is. But maybe, maybe in this, we could see where God has, I know, I know it's always God's part does, but where does man's part begin? Or when, what, 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 what is our responsibility? There is a camp that says it's all God and no man, none of man. There's a camp that focuses all man. And you see, you see what do, 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 do. And, you, you know, the thing, the, the, the frustrating thing is when, when this do, 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 it brings frustration to the heart because you can't. You, you run into that spot where you just can't do it. You, you try and you try. I, 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 I was listening this week as I was cutting grass to a sermon of a, a pastor who was in Canada and he just said, I was fasting, I was praying, I was doing everything that I, that God, I was, nobody was working harder. I was working harder physically. And he said, I just finally completely emotionally and, and physically dropped and literally told the Lord and screamed and, and, and is this how you treat people you love? Told God that. And he said, I was waiting for an answer of, I was waiting for God to smite me. And he was, he said, I was ready to say, go ahead and kill me like Elijah, you know, take me Lord. And the Lord just lovingly spoke to him and, and said, you've done more. I haven't asked you to do these things. I haven't asked you. I've only asked you to be a shepherd to this group. And you have went way over here. And the Lord brought it back to simplicity. And sometimes we have to be careful not to leave the simplicity, right? The simplicity of God. The sim now, now I, I want to just say, if there's a, when, when, you, when you say or when we agree that maybe there's something in our life that would just go, you would just, well, I wish it would go away. It can be a, a, a myriad of things. It can be a, something in a thought life. It, it can be a, a tendency that you have. It could be a, uh, 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 there's so many things it can be. We all know it. I'm not trying to pry or, but think of, you, there, we, were, we were talking at CR. There can be things spoken into your life when you're young and it, you never, you, it never leaves. You, you can be told something or you can be told a certain thing that you are this or you are that and you, you give your whole life believing that that this is what I am. But like Brother Chris uh, mentioned in his prayer, God makes all things new. He, he, God, God, God never leaves us where we are. Now he may for a time of, of, of teaching, but he always move, he's always moving us. Look at the children of Israel. He was always moving them. He could have moved them straight from Egypt into Canaan. Could he not? He's God. He could have. He could have miraculously took them straight in to Canaan. He didn't do it. Why? Why? What, what was the reason, see? So think a minute. Why God, there, are, there can be some things in, that... You could say, well, God, I want to be here, but I'm here. 
Well, then think, why? Now, let's look at Peter just a minute, and, and I'll, I'll try to hurry up. And, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Now, this Herod is such a wicked man, and he's, he's operating under the under the influence of Satan himself, I believe, because the church is really thriving and, and, and the gospel just was going to the Gentiles. It, Peter had just had this miraculous experience, this vision he saw, where he saw the sheet lo lowering down and, and God opened the door for him to uh, uh, preach to Cornelius and the gospel then was going to the Gentiles. It was a wonderful time. And then all of a sudden, this Herod rears his ugly head and kills James, and he's, he's going to do the same to Peter. Because he, he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, so that's four Soldiers, two guarding, two chained to him, okay? You got that in your mind? You got, he's chained to two, and there's two on guard. These are, these are trained soldiers, at what they do. So Peter, therefore, was kept, in verse 5, in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, can I, can I say this to you also? Please pray for people that, that are in prison. Not only in a physical prison, but in prison in their mind, in their heart. Prison of their emotions. Prison of uh, what we're speaking of. Things that, uh, tendencies that we have that you, you wish you didn't have. Desires that you may have that you wish you didn't have. See? And... It's the church. We have to pray because, let me just say this, if there's not an awakening, if there's not an awakening and, and, a, and a move of God's Holy Spirit to dominate the thinking of our young people, beloved, they're going to be swept away with their desires that they don't even understand. They're facing things that you and I never faced. They're facing temptations on this little old phone that you and I never had. They're, 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 with one little touch of a swipe, they can be in bondage the rest of their life. And it's a horrible bondage of the mind when you can't get pictures out of your mind, out of your head. And if we don't have the Holy Spirit to move and dominate wrongful thinking. One, one man said, I don't know much about him. My brother was sending me a YouTube of him and he made mention that uh, the, the young people today don't know how to fail. You know, we've, everybody gets a trophy and a shirt nowadays, a t-shirt, everybody does. And I'm, I'm not, but you know, and he said some people cannot face failure. They don't know how to handle it. So they, they just want to run and, and, and to be somebody else or do, you, you see, to be able to, they don't know how to handle it. And so if, if, if we as a church cannot pray for a move, for a deliverance of those in bondage, we've got to. Does that make sense? It's got to be part of us. It's got to be part of our desire. To, that God would set people free. And, and his word, now, now look what happens here. Maybe this is a, just a slight, maybe, this, maybe we can take an example here. And so Peter, the church is praying without ceasing for him. And verse six, when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the doors kept the prison. Some people have said, how could he sleep? He's going to be dead in the morning. But, and I thought, I read this, and 
but it makes good sense. What promise did God make Peter in John 21? When you're old. See, Peter, you go wherever you want to now. And I believe Peter was that kind of man. He went where he wanted to. He didn't tell him where to go. He did where he wanted. And so, but, but, but he was describing to him a time where you're going to have to stretch forth your hands and somebody else. That would really be hard for he, Peter to, to yield up to that will, that strong will to be yielded to some, to, to go where you don't want to go maybe. And Peter knew. And I, I don't know if that's the case. If Peter remembers, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be old someday. The Lord told me. But somehow or another, he slept between two soldiers, which is a miracle to me in itself, that God would give him that peace and rest with the chains on him. So, <clears throat> behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. His chains fell off from his hands. Now, I don't know if we can take this, but, you know, I, I thought before when the Lord came, uh, when Paul and Silas were in prison, the chains fell off, didn't they? But the earthquake came and all the doors flew open. There's a different scenario here, a little bit different. God didn't do it the same way. You know, one preacher said, God has ridiculous ways of deliverance, doesn't he? We call it ridiculous in the natural, but in the supernatural, it's not. He makes it work because God can do it. And it's, and it's amazing. We don't know, you know, God, and I wrote down, his ways are not our ways. I wouldn't have, you know, and here, I, I wouldn't have been merciful to Herod. I'd have killed him right off. I'd have killed him at the beginning of chapter 12. You know, I, I would want him to live. But God's plan often seems ridiculous to the natural. But God, see, he sees that, that, that we can't see every little detail. He, he, every, he suspends punishment. He holds back judgment. And, and he, everything he does is right and good. So uh, the angel uh, it comes up. And, and what got me was the light shone in the prison. And nobody woke up. If they did, we don't know it. But I, I do know that when David one time was slipping through Saul and his men are sleeping, the Bible said that the, the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on the soldiers. And, and perhaps he did here. But he, he, Peter, the angel says, get up. And let me ask you a question. Maybe there's someone here or someone online. I don't know. But I, this really hit me hard. I have to be honest with you. There are times in, in my personal struggles where I just want to lay there. I just want God to do it. Fix me. You just get wore out. You get wore out emotionally. You get, you get frazzled. You ever been frazzled? Anyway, frazzled at? You just get frazzled. You're just tired of it. You're tired of the fight. You say, God, I, I can't. Why? Why can't you just snap your finger? And the Lord says, get up. Just get up. And, and, and the chains will fall. You know, it's God's job to take the chains off, but it's your and my job to get up. Does that make sense? Just, I don't care if it's one step. There, and there are times when I've said this before and I've known it to be true, when God is just going to ask you to give him one moment. Give me this moment. Give me one moment, one day, one, one hour, one day, one half a day, just one little at a time. Now stop looking so forward to... The angel said to him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. You see the things that he's telling Peter to do. He could have done all that for Peter, could he not? God could have just, he could have made him go from, well, Philip, he did Philip. Philip found himself over here, miraculously. That's what I want. God, take me from here. I want to be over here. 
I want this to be behind me and I want to be over here. And, and see, God says, no. The angel says, no, put on your, in other words, put on your shoes. You've got to walk. You've got to move. You've got to put your coat on. There are some things you just got to do that are ordinary. Just what you've done before. God may say to you, go back to your job and do it just like it. But, and the chains will fall off, but you've got to get up and move. You've got to get up and move. And so he went out and followed him and wished not uh, that it was true, which was done by the angel. And it was like you were talking about before. Yeah, I didn't, Peter was saying, I, he didn't even realize what, he thought it was a vision. It's so uh, unbelievable that this could happen. And, and I say this, can I say this? You know, uh, when, when the children of Israel were delivered from captivity, it said we were like those in a dream. You remember? He said it was, it was too good to be true. And that's what God does. In a moment of time, the chains fall off. And you think this is a dream. I fought it all my life. I fought it all my life. And all of a sudden, God, they fall off. Okay. He goes, uh, they come to an iron gate that leads into the city. And one, one man said, God always leads us out to bring us in. He always leads us out of one place to bring us into another. Does that make sense? He never, he always, he did the children of Israel that every time, every time he led them out, he brought them in. He leads us out to bring us in a little further, a little more knowledge, a little more. You know, as you, as you walk with him, what happens? Your knowledge of him increases. To be honest with you, the more you forget about yourself, the better off you are. Satan would have you to think about yourself all the time. He wants you to. He wants you to think about yourself and your weaknesses and your struggles. He wants, to, he wants that, that TV in front of you all the time. But, but, but and, and it feels like Charles, Charles Solomon wrote in the, in the book, Handbook to Happiness, which I recommend highly. He said, a, a introspective Christian, when he refuses to look at himself, he feels like he's fallen down on the job. And, 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 and he, he puts it this way. He said, when we look at ourselves, it's just a bunch of garbage. He said, so an introspective, neurotic Christian has a bunch of neatly piled stacks of garbage. Do you ever seen the Wally? You ever seen the movie Wally? That's one of my favorite cartoons of all time. And that guy's supposed to be a Christian that produced that. But Wally, he's, a, he's left behind on earth. And all he does is take this garbage and squishes it into a square block and stacks it up. And then when you get this screen and you look, that's what he does every day of his life. He has all these perfectly stacked things of garbage. And I think that's what an introspective uh, navel gazer is. He's got all this garbage, but he stacked it so good. He knows exactly what's over here. This is the lust stack. This is the temper stack. You, you, or whatever it is, whatever the stack is, he, he knows exactly where it is. He knows so much about himself. And it doesn't want nothing but make you miserable. There's no gain in it, you see. So, I don't know how I got on that, but... Okay, so when, when Peter was come to himself, he finally said, the angel departed then. So after, the, I, don't, I don't know exactly why the angel left at this particular time. But he leads him through certain ways. As an iron gate opens, he's into the city. The angel leaves. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angels, delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was, surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Now, get this. Why didn't that door open? See, the, the, every door has opened uh, until now. And now the door, you, why, he can't even get in. You see, there are some things that God does and some he don't. 
He doesn't open this door. And, and I do know that, uh, of course, we, we know that Rhoda, she comes and she just takes off running because she don't believe it's Peter. And he's knocking. And they said, you're mad. Which, you know, the, the people that are praying, that's what they're praying for. God answers the prayer. And, and they say, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like myself. You know, I, I uh, can I share a, a personal thing on the prayer and answers to prayer? My wife prays a lot. I mean, she, she prays a lot and she has this list and she has a book and she's a, she is a prayer warrior. I say that about her. She puts me in the shade in that. And so I had uh, one night this week, I had, was going shopping grocery store and I saw somebody in there that owed me money. And I thought, mm, I don't want to see him. So I walked around and said, wait. I went around, had my little basket, my little basket, and I thought, I'm not, I don't want, I don't know how I'm going to react. So I don't want to, I'm just going to avoid. And I go around, I, I walk around, and I look, and I'm thinking, well, Lord. And something come in my mind that you should just, it's okay. But I just kind of fought against that. It didn't yield. Maybe, maybe that's the word. I didn't. And so I, I looked again. And went, they're, they're still there. And I go back around. And, and so and then I saw his wife. And I, uh, I just didn't know what was going on. So I go completely around this other aisle. And I go around the corner. And I almost run into him. <laughs> and it was like, oh. And she said, she said, leave. I hadn't seen, and so we, I, I won't tell you the details of it or why. Uh, I had resentment. I just had to admit it. I did. I tried to not, but it came right up. You know what I mean? I thought I'd had that, maybe the chains was off, but they were not, they were not off. And so we talked, and, and she said, you never send us a bill, but I, but I did. So I'm thinking, wait a minute. I have been thinking wrongly for a long time. Come to find out, the bill went to a wrong number. And they had, and so when I get home, guess what my wife says? They're on my prayer list. I've been praying them that they would, can you believe that? That was a direct answer. She's like nonchalant. I've been praying about that. What's the matter with it? What are you thinking? And here I am going all around the mountain trying to beat this, all this. I, I guess if it had a video of me, it would be so foolish. The way I'm looking at going around and thinking in my head, what do I do? You know, how am I going to do? Yes, yeah, Lord. And I, I felt bad that I, I felt bad that I felt bad toward them. And it was all in my head. Isn't that crazy how that can just cause friction between someone? And it wasn't even true. I felt this high. And but prayer, and I think that's the way Rhoda and them were. They've been praying and praying, and Peter's out there, you're crazy. God's answered the prayer, and they don't even get it. But but finally they do. Finally they do. And and my my, my here's my I just want to end in prayer. Uh, and, and maybe there's something in your heart that uh, you, need to, you need to just get up inwardly maybe and not stop laying down. You know, you, we can get in that mode, but like that guy that laid by the pool of Bethesda and he said, would you be made whole? He said, well, I ain't got nobody, Lord, to, to put me in the water. You know, he, he's like, he didn't, he didn't say, yes, yes, I want to be whole. And, and part, we, we all want to be whole. And let me just say it this way too. A wise man said this, we're not called to be perfect, but we're called to follow one who is. Yes. Yes. See? And so um, if, if there's a, a something in your heart that, <laughs> That maybe there's a struggle, maybe there's a part of your life that you just wish would go away. It could be a, a way that you feel about yourself. It could be something that you've carried your whole life. It could be a, 
a negative uh, attitude, it, whatever it could be that, that seems to always rear its ugly head. It could be something that just is brand new in your life. You know, so things new come in and you think, I've never had this before. Why am I struggling with this? Why, what is this? This has never been an issue with me, but now it is. And I have a hard time with it. You see, maybe there's something like that, but maybe it's the time the Lord says, okay, just get up. I'll, I'll handle the chains. I'll do that part. But your part is to get up, put your shoes on, and just move in the direction to follow me. Jesus said, follow me, right? And we all in this church want to do that. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want to follow him. You want to follow him. You want to obey him. I do. I do. Uh, obedience should not be a scary thing. It's always been a scary thing for me at times. I'm afraid I won't obey. I'm afraid I won't want to obey. You see. Like Walker says, when I go this, I say, let's go this way. He says, go well, that way. He always points the opposite way that I want to go. And sometimes I'm the same way with, with the Lord. But maybe as we end this evening, can we just end in prayer that, uh, that you could give this to the Holy Spirit and allow him to give you the strength to get up, to get up. Because sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. You would rather just be like Elijah. And you know, when Elijah said, just, I, he just lay down under the juniper tree or broom tree, whatever it was. And God was patient with him. He gave him a cake and, and, and strengthened him. But then after the strength, what happened? Get up. Get up, Elijah. Go back. Go, 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 go to the job that I've, I've given you to do.